Hello everybody and welcome to part two of uh, Larry's Leopard or Larry's Leopard not Leotard no La Larry's keeping that in his closet and it's Larry's Leopard okay um, it's the old 1979 Tamiya kit of the uh, Leopard 1A4 in the last video uh, we got it all made up when I say we I mean <laughs> got it all made up anyway so now it's time to start getting it painted so before we go down to the bench and have a look at it all laid out uh, stripped back down for for painting um, I just want to say again thank you very very much to Larry for sending this kit on to me uh, I really do appreciate it and uh, I love all the help that uh, people have sent me in the past and um, I just I just want to really say thank you again for, for all that. So, without further ado, as people often say, let's get down to the bench. We we'll, have the uh, it broken down again into some separate parts for painting. So we'll have a look at those and we'll have a look at how I've, uh, you know, the plan I've got for getting this thing uh, all sorted. Okay, so there she is. There's all the, uh, the parts all broken back down again. And the way I'm going to paint this is I'm going to do the base first because I want to put the two pieces together. Um, if I put them together now, obviously the, these things covered the track and you won't be able to get the painted properly. You won't be able to get the track on or off or anything unless you do it this way. Okay, so I have all the wheels on their little pegs. Okay, I've had to use double, <laughs> double toothpicks. Okay because uh, one toothpick the, the hole wasn't uh, it was too big so just two toothpicks stick them in that does the job okay anything will work at all a bit of bamboo anything at all um, I've even used bits of sprue so we get all our wheels right on the toothpicks just keeps them all nice and separate and we can get them all painted up uh, so I'm going to give everything a um, my usual uh, black first okay um, NATO black that's my my undercoat um, reason for doing that is when you spray once you spray down the NATO black it shows up any anything w where it needs further work now it won't really matter too much on the bottom section because you're not going to get to see most of it you're not going to get to see the underside because I'm not going to be picking it up and looking underneath um, lots of it is going to be covered by the uh, side skirts but it will make a lot of difference when I go to attaching these parts so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get the base done right and the tracks get them all painted up detail painting on them as well you know on the return rollers along the top uh, the rubber on the wheels get the tracks done okay um, the way I do the tracks is I'll give them a NATO black base then give them an overspray of um, red brown and then I'll go over the the rubber pads then with uh, rubber black then it get them all assembled right once they're assembled then I'll attach the top section to that mask off the wheels and the tracks and then paint the upper hull same idea again um, a, bl a black NATO base the reason I won't go paint, painting them as separates and then attach them is because here at the front hold on, I'm after <laughs> I'm using double sided tape here and it's actually quite strong but I can just show you quite quite easily without too, too much hassle right that's how these go together Okay, that sits in. We'll go all wrong for me now. Right, that sits in there, pops down. That sits in there and pops down, doesn't it? Yes, John, it does. Right, there we go. Not as easy as it sounds. Isn't it, isn't it mad? Isn't it? I do this, I've done this, putting this together about seven or eight times already and everything goes together lovely and the one time I tried to do it then on, 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 on film it doesn't ain't that just typical right there she is once you have those you end up with a kind of a little gap here right it's not as bad as that 
when it eventually sits down properly but you do end up with a little bit of a gap a gapping in there and it doesn't really look very nice but uh, there we go you'll see the, there we finally got it together see that little gap there they're going to show up right so see it that's that get, little gap there so once all that's painted I can go in then with my with my glue the uh, seal up that make that join a little bit better a bit of sanding and you won't see those uh, that gap that gap will be gone and then when it's painted then you won't see it at all um, so that's why I'm doing it that way just makes it that little bit easier uh, for, for doing that and then go ahead then and paint the top and paint the turret now I use uh, a bit of double sided tape onto these little uh, cups works works brilliant it gives me something to hold on to while I'm doing while I'm doing the painting and because they're you know they're stuck on the inside they're not going to matter same idea for this I can spray away here without having to touch it just a handy little tip some people sort of try and spray away get the front done to me a paint dry quickly so you could nearly kind of hold it like that and then spray the back section but you will the odd time you do get all finger marks on that there so this is just a little easy oh, windage just a little easier and uh, hopefully it'll it'll work out nicely so next step now for me is to get this painted I'll paint up the wheels paint up the underside paint the tracks and we'll have a quick look at them before I assemble them um, you know the wheels the rubber black and the wheels on the, on the rubbers and the wheels and the center is done in the green and um, I'm going to go for uh, just the one color I'm not going to go for the camouflage scheme and the scheme on this so when it comes to doing the uh, upper hull section and the turret I'll be using um, sort of a bit of pre-shading the old black and white technique so next step now for me is to get the uh, wheels and the underside done and I'll be back to you as soon as all they're done so there okay then right here we have it now so far um, I know I said I'd show you the um, the wheels and the tracks before I put them on but unfortunately I uh, I did the bun yesterday uh, today is Tuesday obviously because the bun was Mondays and uh, I showed the tracks and all that apart and when I went then sat down last night to uh, you know continue on working away um, I kind of knew that I had done the video showing the tracks and things and else everything else and I said oh yeah I've that done I've that clip done so what I did was I, I fitted everything glued the two pieces together okay the top onto this and masked off all the tracks and I had everything done and then today I realized I went oh I never actually did the, the, the clip showing the tracks and the wheels but if you want to actually see them separate go over and watch yesterday's bum uh, Monday's bum Monday the 11th okay 11th of November so watch that bum and you can catch up and then you can go just a quick uh, look at the uh, tracks otherwise wait till the end of this video you'll see it when the when these uh, masking comes off so we've got everything NATO blacked which I did earlier on and now what I'm going to do is I'm after giving it the um, the little white spots you know highlighted some areas with white um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the uh, NATO green all over yep NATO green that's the color I'm going to use I like using the NATO green for a number of reasons one is it's a nice uh, sort of a medium color okay for for military vehicles uh, so if, if you want it darker just give it a darker wash and it works out perfect I mean I've even used it for you know for the Russian vehicles giving it a nice dark wash and it works up works perfectly it really really does now uh, after doing the white I want to, I'm going to clean my airbrush before I kind of continue on and paint the um, paint the green on this and I was in town today and I got my uh, my usual uh, fill up of uh, what I use for airbrush cleaner now I know that you can go off and you can buy a little bottle 
that size okay I'm not going to name the company but I'm sure you all know it that size it's blue in colour alright I'm just bring back the camera a bit oh well done John <laughs> I'm pretty good. I think I'm deadly for that alright it's blue in colour as in the liquid is blue in colour and uh, that size will cost you seven quid okay that's seven pounds sterling which works out about nine euro and then I, I have to get it from England so therefore I'm paying postage and packaging and everything like that on top of it for the last I'd say the last year year and a half okay this is my airbrush right this is the airbrush I use this is one of those cheap Chinese airbrushes but I've been using it now for about two years believe it or not and I haven't had an ounce of problems with it it, spray, it sprays absolutely perfect now I might have been lucky and got a good one because I did get a second one I have another one there and it's not as good it, it just it spits it freaking half the time it doesn't really will work but this one is practically identical practically identical but this one works perfectly absolutely perfect now for the last year and a half I have been using that okay it's surgical spirit I get it from uh, boots as you can see but you know the brand names mean nothing especially when it comes to surgical spirit surgical spirit is surgical spirit there's nothing um, nothing extravagant or exciting about it okay but that bottle of it right 500 milliliters which is an awful lot bigger than that little thing okay I think that's 300 I think there's 300 mils in that but for 500 mils for half a liter is six euro right now I'm sure that's only what you can get it for under a fiver in England for what basically does the exact same job right I've had no problems with this whatsoever my airbrush still works perfectly seals haven't been degraded or anything like that I also use it then say in a little cup when I'm cleaning um, my paint brushes and things it works perfectly it absolutely works perfectly um, I can't say anything bad about it at all it, it just works okay so if any of you are trying to save a few bob especially when it comes to airbrush cleaner because you might be there sparing it and not giving your airbrush a good proper clean but with this it does an excellent job and it's only like I said six euro on whatever it costs in England I don't know maybe under a fiver for a half litre bottle of it can't go wrong and in America it's probably even cheaper again okay so that's just a little handy little uh, hint and tip for you there so I'm now going to go off and I'm going to uh, get this clean my airbrush and get this sprayed then with XF67 XF67 NATO green okay now because I have the white done I'm going to spray it on nice and and light and build up the build it up slowly so therefore I get the uh, I'll get the effects of the pre-shading because if I just go in hard and you know spray the whole thing I've only wa I've wasted all the time I've done for the pre-shading of it whereas if you go up to spray it on nice layers thin layers maybe three or four thin layers you'll get the, the, the color variations within the same color and it looks better okay so I'm gonna go off get that cleaned spray this all green come back then we will have a look at it I promise we come back and have a look at it before I do the uh, the detail painting on the uh, on the tools and all the other little bits and pieces okay I have a couple of little ideas I want to do um, especially for for here for the um, for the vision blocks in here okay um, for the uh, inside of the mirrors so when I've got them when I've got the uh, all done and I'm doing the detail painting I'll show you my little hints little tip again for using for these okay so stay tuned be back in a sec and that'll be green okay now there as you can see there's the uh, literally just just finished painting and as you can see from that you can see here perfect example Whereas here is a darker green, put some kind of a lighter green there. Same here, you can see that, that like. <laughs> That's Abby messing away inside in the room. But uh, you can see sort of 
the corners here are darker and the centre of the panels are lighter. Okay. So it's literally just a case of just building up the uh, building up the green coat, or your second coat, your main coat, whichever colour you want to do. Be it the uh, you know dark yellow, blue, green, pink, God knows what else. If you're using sort of a, a pre-shading method, build up your paint nice and slow. And get these little panels, you can see it here. You know, and you get colour variation of the same colour. So that was all painted with NATO green. But if you look at it, it's like that modulation thing, which I, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, I personally think that modulation is, you know, it, that's perfect if you're going you're going to view it from one side. You know, like they're saying that oh, the sun comes in from this way, so this side here, panels here will be dark. And if you turn it around that way, no, it's that panel there is dark, and that panel here is light. You know, if there's your if there's your light source, depends where your light source is coming from. But with, pre with uh, colour modulation, you're dictating where that light source is coming from, right? Which isn't natural, which isn't natural, you know. Uh, the sun moves around, um, get a model kit, if you lay it sort of in that position, and this, the light is coming from here, or if it's just general all around light, you'll see that there's, you know, Where's the light coming from? It just doesn't make sense. I, I don't. I, I I think it's irrelevant. No, there are some people that really like the color modulation and all that. Personally, I think it's a, it's a lot of shite. But that, you know, that's my own opinion, <laughs> and I keep with that as my own opinion. So don't go off quoting me saying, "Oh, John Moore says that color modulation is shite, so therefore it's shite." No, it's not. No, it's not. Everything to its own. I just personally don't see the point of it. No. The pre shading another uh, uh, I think does look nice right now I know that modern tanks and the paint and the paint is all designed not to fade okay same believe it or not with World War two vehicles the paint didn't actually fade with sunlight or anything like that over time it did but not say and when I say over time I'm talking about maybe 10 20 years and things like that and it's been left out in the sun yeah it's going to bleach or whatever but in use, you know, when you're doing, say, a, a World War II vehicle of a Tiger or something, and you go into that pre-shading kind of thing, it, it, it didn't last long enough for the colours to be uh, faded and all that. But a bit of artistic licence works well there because it makes it look good. Okay, And the same for me with doing this. And it's probably the same for the people who do the, do the uh, colour modulation. They like the effect that you get from it, you know, and it's down to literally pleasing yourself. I've always stated that. Do what you're happy with, and with me, I'm happy doing it this way. So I'm going to try to get trying to get a quiet five minutes in this house is practically impossible. It's too many people, too many people. All right, next step for this: get the detail done. Well, leave it dry overnight, of course, because I don't want to go handling it. It'll, you know, it does mark if you, if you go handling the paint too early and things like that. So I'm going to leave that dry overnight. Then I'm going to get all the detail painting done. I'm going to get all the uh, all the tools, um, the machine gun, and that, the aerial, uh, the smoke launchers, the tops of the smoke launchers. They would have had a sort of a black or a dark green co um, cap over them. I must double check out to see what color cap I want on them. Um, I want to do a bit of uh, a bit of natural work in here because you don't get the uh, glass popping ones that you would with say a more modern kit so I'm going to make my own and the same roughly the same kind of thing I'm going to do with the uh, with the wing mirrors because they're kind of hollowed out a bit if I thought about it earlier I could have done the same with the lights um, I'd actually thought about it after I'd installed them and everything else and I wasn't going to bother of going breaking them out um, but the idea that I did have and I had it afterwards like I said, but I'm going to do it say uh, at a later stage or with another kit at some stage is basically just drill out the centre of the light piece, paint the inside silver, and use that uh, glue and glaze over the top, and it'll just look a bit better than say just painting that silver. But what I am going to do is I'm going to when I, after I paint them silver, I'm just going to put a little bit of the glue and glaze over them.
just to, to see will it kind of give it a, a, um, the silver will give it the, the silvery background but will the glue and glaze over it even at, 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 at practically no depth um, will it give it that kind of a glass look which is what I'm, I, I want to get in it so like I said let's I'll get the leave that dry overnight and then I'll get stuck into doing the detail painting. When the detail sponge painting is done, we'll come back and we'll have a look at it. Um, and also, I want to show you what I'm going to do with the uh, with, with the vision blocks here and the wing mirrors. Basically, after telling you what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do the same thing here with those. Just a bit of silver paint in behind and a bit of the glue and glaze to build up the glass effect on those. So, join me now in a second and we'll start the... Uh, the, the, the detail painting well, it's the second for you it's overnight for me so it's tomorrow night but uh, we'll wait and we'll get that done then ok ok so I'm after giving it uh, a good 24 hours uh, drying time so now I can touch it without worrying about um, leaving fingerprints and things like that on it. Now, as you can see here I'm after using a little bit of masking tape just on the edges of those um, vision blocks there because I don't want, once I go in with the silver paint I don't want to sort of get it on the edges I just want it in there in, in the actual little blocks themselves now it's not going to make much of a difference but it's going to be slightly visible and slightly is good enough for me right so what I've got is I've got a tiny bit of silver paint here at the bottom of a bottle and I'm going to use one of these little micro brushes right so, load up the micro brush, not too much, wipe off anything that's going to drip off or anything like that, right? So, what I want to do is I want to kind of coat the inside of that, right? So, about make out it's actually in there and it's just brightened it up that slight little bit and as you see that the uh, the tape is after doing its little bit of work there I'm not too worried about say around the edge there okay because I will get it that's much easier to um, to remove well not to necessarily remove but to paint over it be a lot easier than say trying to get a uh, get it on the um, on the flat surfaces at the front there right. so these little micro brushes are brilliant because they I mean they're, they're stiff enough that they can get into the area into small little areas like that you know, whereas a brush might be just a little bit too flexible in there, which you don't. What you don't want is that a little bit of the edge there. enough to, to do with what I want to do with okay now the same here with the mirrors surfaces silvered like I said I'm not too worried about getting little bits there on the uh, on the edges they're easy enough to get rid of 
it's a flat surface as well it's a big area around it you only kind of say patching up one a little bit that is just so much harder okay there we go I'll do the other one because it's just so hard here with the camera in front of me to get them done now when they're done and I've been all cleaned off and everything is dry I'll show you what I'm going to do next um, with some glue and glaze I'm also going to get the um, all the tools done and any other little bits of um, uh, detail painting that have to be done we'll come back then we'll have a look at it and uh, we kind of basically discuss how it went whether it was good bad or indifferent okay so I'll be back to you in a few secs I'll have the detail painting done and we'll move on then to getting the, that glue and glaze onto the um, onto the vision blocks and onto the mirrors Oh yeah, and the lights as well on the front. So we'll give that a go. Come back to you in two shakes of a ram's bottom. Okay, so there she is now with the uh, detail painting done. Okay. All nice and clean. <laughs> Slowly when they're nice and clean, aren't they? All right, detail painting done on both sides. And as you see, then I've got silver inside the mirrors and on the uh, vision blocks okay it's inside there uh, on the turret as well doing detail painting really on the turret was the uh, the, the aerial itself the uh, machine gun and the tips of the uh, smoke clutchers so that that's the detail painting done now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, use this glue and glaze stuff to um, you know to make the glass in the um, vision blocks the mirrors and the, the headlights if any of you never really seen this before this this is how it's done well this is how I do it okay you need a toothpick or a cocktail stick whatever you want to call it that's okay with me All right Little, this stuff here is this is what I use deluxe products glue and glaze absolutely fabulous I've had this now for some time and it does a brilliant job right you just need a tiny little bit okay just put a tiny little drop of it onto a container right so I'll do it on the mirror at least it's a bit, bit more visible on the mirror Okay, so what you do is you get it up, a little globby wool of it on a cocktail stick, right? Go around the edges of what you want to do, goes around quite easily, right? And then swipe across like that, okay? And that dries clear. Okay. And it all dries out so you got a nice clear see how easy that was? Just swipe it across. Okay. Same idea then on these. A little bit harder on these because you don't really have a bottom surface. But there we go, we'll have to get money. And the third one done. Now I'm 
going to do a little bit on the lights as well. Oh. I'm just kind of putting a bit really on the lights just to give it that um, sort of glassy look to the front of them. Okay. Right. Light is a bit awkward there now. There we go. A bit better there. So you can see the lights on the uh, vision blocks and the wing mirrors. Alright, so I'm going to leave that aside now. Let that dry. I won't do any more to that. Next step now is I'm going to put on the decals. Okay, there's only a small few decals. So I'm going to get them done. Next time you'll see it now, the decals will be on and the uh, those little vision blocks and wing mirrors and the lights. That should be all dry. So we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Okay. Okay then, so there's Larry's Leopard now with the uh, decals done and the, um, the blue and glaze has dried on the on the uh, vision blocks and the wing mirrors and the front lights. We'll get to them now in a second. So next step now for this is to give it a, a glass coat um, and some weathering. Now I'm doing very very light weathering in this, just really sort of a pin wash to get up some of the to give it an overall wash to darken it up a bit. Uh, pin washed it to kind of highlight any of the um, things that are sticking out, the protrusions, the, um, the deep lines and you know where hatches are and all that kind of uh, panels and that, that type thing just to make them stick out a bit. Um, so there's going to be no rust or battle damage or anything like that on it. Um, so I just have it as a nice clean um, a nice clean, what do you call it, Shel shelf model, okay, and it's not going into a diorama or anything like that, but um, so far I'm really really happy with how this is turning out, it's absolutely beautiful, it really really is, uh, delighted the way the um, that, that colour shading, pre-shading is after coming out, you can really see it there, how different panels are lighter and darker and all that kind of uh, good stuff. Now let's have a look at those um, wing mirrors, the uh, vision blocks and the lights. You see how that looks. I, I, I did look at earlier and wow I think it looks absolutely fabulous. Now whether you can see it or not on the, uh, on the video I do not know. But there's the wing mirror. You can see that sort of the, that shine off it to give it that, that, that glassy effect. Uh, which is what I which is what I was hoping for, you know. And you can see it there in the vision box. You can see where the light catches them. It's better than just say painting them silver. So it's a handy little tip there. A bit of white glue. That glue and glaze is is, is about the best use for it. Okay. It's um, again. I'll just show you the bottle of that, just in case you want to go out and purchase a a, a bottle of it yourself. Oops. This is it. It's deluxe materials, glue and glaze. I know you can get it in model hobbies. Um, I'm sure a lot of the other hobby uh, suppliers will have it as well. And it's absolutely fabulous stuff for doing basically this kind of thing. Um, can you can even see it now on the uh, on, on, on the, the headlights there. That, that kind of you know, you you're gonna sort of the other basically blah blah blah. The only options you had really were just paint them silver, you know. But by painting them silver and putting that little coat of that over it, it kind of gives it a little bit of a glass <coughs> effect over it. Okay, you can see it there. Now my painting could have been a little bit better, you know. My eyesight ain't the best, and my hands ain't the steadiest, but I'm happy enough with that. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't have done much, much, much more to it. Like, 
spoons in there. So you can see it's got a kind of a gl a glazing over it, which is what you want, which is what, what I'm looking for. Right, next step, like I said, is to give this uh, a glass coat that will seal in the, um, the decals. It'll also take the, the shine off because the, the decals are nice and shiny, whereas the, the model is kind of matte. Now, the actual vehicles would have, they wouldn't be sort of gloss or they wouldn't be matte, they'd be kind of a semi gloss kind of look to them. So, when I give that a black wash, that takes down the, um, the glossiness effect and it gives it a nice look. So, next step, like I said, I'm going to give it a glass coat. We'll see what that looks like. Right, okay, there she is now. I'm after giving it a glass coat. And one of the things that I'd forgotten to do, but I'm after getting it done, was to paint the uh, the canvas section here. This would be a sort of a canvas um, mantlet cover, just to protect rain from and all that from debris and dirt and God knows what else. Getting into the mechanism here that operates the um, operates the, the 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 gun, the you know the elevation and all that of the gun. In real life now, not not in the uh, in the model, obviously. But um, I'd forgotten to paint that a different colour, so I'm after getting in there. I'm after getting it painted now, and as you can see, it's just it's different. It's uh, after using olive ordinary olive drab on that because I didn't want it the exact same colour as the metal because it, obviously it wouldn't be the same colour as the metal. So now she's glass coated, and as you can see, look, it's actually you can nearly leave it as that as a, a kind of a standalone piece, and it would it would uh, pass muster. But I want to give it a bit of weathering, not too much, like I said, just a bit of. Uh, I'm going to give it. Um, I'm going to give it a black wash. I'm going to kind of give it a pin wash, and uh, anything else that I can see along the way. I want to make do a little bit here on the wood, so I might use a little bit of oil paint here on the wood for those, just to kind of get um, you know a bit of color variation into that because it's just it's just too clean. It's just too clean looking. So I want that to uh, look a bit better than what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start doing bits and pieces to it. If I come up with any other um, weird things that I'm going to try on it, I will let you know, although I doubt it. Um, like I said, I'm just going to give it just a nice little bit of weathering, nothing too, nothing too drastic. And um, it should make a nice um, ornamental piece then at that. Okay. And there we go, I'm calling this one done. Okay. Um, I give it the wash, I give it a uh, dry brushing. Um, for dry brushing, I used three different colours in the dry brushing actually. Because I'd given it a dark wash with the over the NATO green, what I did was I used NATO green again as a, wa as a, a dry brush. Um, I also used uh, Oh, German colour. Ah, brain has gone dead again. Um, field grey. Yes, German field grey. I use that as a wash, as, or a, as a dry brush as well. And I also give it a dry brush with buff. Um, give it an extra little bit of a pin wash, covering, getting into all the little crevices and things. Um, used uh what else did I do to it? Oh I used a pencil, well my graphite pencil shined up little areas there as you can see just to kind of give it that metallic look on some of the uh on some of the hard edges and um from a distance then I gave it a spray with buff just to give it a kind of a dust coat. Really really happy with how everything turned out I must admit really really happy with it. Um, as you see, I did the little figure as well. Not not great figures. The, those Ultimia figures, in in all fairness, they're not the best. They have they have improved. Really, really have improved to me figures. But this is one of the old seventies figures, and they are not the best, I must say. But the tank itself is absolutely fabulous, and um, I'm really thrilled with how how it came out. Um, really really happy with it not just a little bit happy but really really happy with it um, I love the uh, 
the fading in different areas, the color, you know, changes. Um, happy with the way the build was, um, and just overall, just just worked out to be a really really nice, uh, nice nice vehicle and thing. Right, so I'm going to bring the camera down a bit. All right, just change the angle of the camera so we can get a look at some of the parts a little bit closer. There's that figure. How many? Bit of light on it. They're not the best of figures. Um, detail is a kind of bit lacking in them. See that kind of zoom in at all. It doesn't. It doesn't even want to. It won't recognise it. Whereas with the more modern figures, it kind of recognises them as a face and and, and clarifies that little bit better. But uh, yeah, figures are not the best. And if you actually stand him close to the tank. You can see how much out of scale he actually is. But let's get in close enough to the actual vehicle itself. Um, you'll be able to see. How the whole thing ended up. Like I said, I am really, really chuffed with it. It came out so good. Um, very, very happy with the overall uh, kit both in the build and in the painting so to me it did their part as far as I'm concerned um, I'm just hoping that you think that I did my part I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with it I think it came out absolutely fabulous but then again you know uh, we're the worst our own worst critics and our own um, kind of trumpet blowers as well to a certain degree but uh, personally, I think this came out very, very nice. Um, just give it another little spin there, just to show the different areas. But overall, I'm really, 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 really happy with how everything turned out. Um, can't fault it. I just can't fault it. I really, really can't. Like I said, a big thank you to Larry, Larry Brown, for sending me on this. And this is Larry's Leopard, all finished up. Okay, so again, thank you very much to Larry for sending me on that kit. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm one of those people that don't have a stash. I, I sort of work from kit to kit. I buy one when I can afford it. And, you know, I've been lucky enough so far that sort of... I can keep going, if you know what I mean. I haven't had any real kind of uh, lulls in building. Uh, it's hard to kind of keep up with build after build after build and keep uploading them. Um, I kind of sort of put pressure on myself to, to, to get them finished in a reasonable amount of time and um, to sort of do them in a reasonable amount of time. But I, I'm sort of building quite a lot during the year which is which as opposed to say other builders who might only say build five six kits in a year I'm building an average 10 and 12 okay so that's it lads let me know what you think in the comments box below um, like I said I'm really really happy with it what do you think you know um, let me know what you think be honest at your criticisms or your uh, or whatever you want to say about it just, just let me know what you think honestly because uh, like I said I, I, I think that this one is uh, it's right up there with uh, some of the uh, the better ones that I have done so I might be improving yay so anyway guys let me know what you think below in the comments box uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed if you have thank you very much I do appreciate it um, I will be taking some pictures of this and putting them up on the uh, Facebook site on the Facebook page should I say sorry uh, it's John Moore scale models on Facebook and if you want to become a member of our little club shall we say because it's there for everybody to upload your bills um, and there's some some fabulous 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 builds builders out there 
are sharing stuff um, people who wouldn't have normally shared stuff are, are putting stuff up so great going lads really really appreciate it and uh, you know a pat, the pat in the back is down to ye you know um, I mean I like building and sharing what I'm doing okay I'm not uh, like I said I'm not a competition style or uh, even quality modeler but I'm not far off I don't think so anyway so I'll catch you in the next one lads stay safe in the meantime go out and buy yourself a kit build it and enjoy it and don't forget to stay tuned to the channel for, for um, future videos and future builds so until then take care bye